Let's take a look at code.org unit four, lesson 10 functions practice. So in this lesson here, we're going to go through several programming puzzles that deal with uh, creating functions, calling functions and writing functions. In this first activity, what you're going to do is rearrange the order so that the functions tell a story. Now, if we look at the four functions that we've got down here, we've got function spring, first comes spring when flowers bloom, summer, summer sun will follow soon, autumn, autumn crackles red and gold, winter, then hibernate for winter's cold. Now, if we want this to create this poem, what we want to do is make sure that the functions are called in the correct order. So to do this, you can just simply uh, rearrange where these programs are or where the functions are called. So of course we would want to call uh, spring first. And when you call a function, all you have to do is write its name with a set of parentheses and a uh, semicolon afterwards. We want to do summer next, then autumn, then winter. And we'll see what happens when we run this thing. So we see it creating the poem down here in the debug console. And we see the poem print correctly. Let's continue on to the third one. Now in this one, it wants you to draw this building that you see up here in the top right of your screen. And it says that you're going to add code to the program to draw at least three more floors to the building. So if we want to draw this, we have to have the roof called first, then several floors, and then the lobby at the very bottom with the door in the building. Okay. So we're going to need to add several uh, floors in here. So we can just type floor, parentheses, semicolon. Says to do this at least three times. So this might seem redundant. And we will look at uh, doing loops to make this a little bit more efficient later on. Uh, but we've added three floors. We can speed this up to the rabbit here and we can run it and we can see what it creates in the debug console. So we're building this building from the top down, but since we're just writing lines of code uh, to, to print in the console log, then this is, this is uh, the way we'd have to do that there. And that looks good. <clears throat> and the whole idea behind that one is the more you call the function, the more it, um, the more it will run. Now in this one, there's a little bit of an issue. We see two error messages over here uh, with uh, line seven and line eight. So if we run this, it says we got an unexpected token. Uh, that's line eight there, character four. Okay. And what's going on is the function is by Apple, but the Apple is capitalized. So if we go in here, we would want to capitalize that and we would want to delete that space. Okay. Now let's reset it and let's run it again. And so it'll print this out quickly and it'll say, I have zero apples and five dollars. Let's buy another apple. Now I have one apple. I have one apple and four dollars. Let's buy another apple. Now I have two apples. I have two apples and three dollars, etc. And we notice in here there's an else statement. It says now I have blank apples or how, however many apples, um, and I don't have any money left. And that's we're going to run that. I don't have any money left if the dollars uh, run out. Okay, so let's see how many times we need to run this function. So we'll add another buy apple. Let's see if that lets us run out of money. Ah, there we go. Little syntax error there. So now I have five apples, and let's see if we can run this one more time to see that it actually shows that we've run out of money. So let's add another buy apple. And there we go, we see it printing out the else statement, I don't have any money left. As you work through this, uh, 
lesson, there are quite a few of these little puzzles. Um, make sure that at the end of the puzzle, you click the um, finish instead of just uh, moving on, uh, because that'll actually turn that green and shows me that you have actually completed that task. Now, this is a similar function to what we've, or a similar program to what we've seen before with the, the click liker, uh, the click up and click down to increase and decrease the counts of clicks. And so here we're actually looking at a mood. So the thumbs up starts at five and we get a variable mood. Um, so we'll need to add an update screen. Now we see in here that the function update screen has already been written, right? So we see all this happening in the uh, function. And if we hop over to the uh, show blocks, we'll see everything that's in this function. And I like the show blocks for the functions um, because we see that that set property there is actually in the function. Although it might not look like it at first glance when you're looking at the uh, text written out. We see that this um, curly brace down here actually closes up the function. Okay, So if you're wondering, is that set property inside or not? That curly brace starts right here. That's our first open one. And when you click on one of these or highlight it, it'll show you where the closed part of it is. Okay. So what we need to do here is actually update the screen. So if we want to run that uh, code update screen, we just need to write update screen. We'll do that in line five. And that'll tell the program right here to run this function. Let's run it and see what we get. Mood's neutral. Trying to click it, see if anything's happening. Nothing's happening. Uh, let's try it again. Still nothing's happening in my app. So I need to go back and uh, work on something in there. Um, so if on the event up button is clicked, then the function thumbs up equals thumbs up plus one. So we want to add code to update the screen here as well. So all we've done is update the screen at the very beginning. So then we'll say we we'll want to update the screen after the uh, thumbs up is clicked. And so we will do update screen. And then we will also need to add an update screen here. Type in the screen first. Sorry about that. So now we're going to update the screen after we are clicking the thumbs up and thumbs down button. So let's reset this since we've changed the code. And now we see that's changing. We get a happy mood and let's make sure it happens if we go down past uh, zero. So when we're in the negatives, we are sad. Okay, good deal. We are finished with this task. Keep working through Lesson 10. If you have any issues, please post them in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out with it. Thanks a lot.